Fukushima Prefecture, situated at the southern part of Tohoku region, about 200 kilometers from Tokyo, is the third largest prefecture in Japan. While being close to the nation's capital, traditional Japanese culture still exists here. It is an industrial prefecture, with a total value of goods shipped being the highest in the Hokkaido and Tohoku regions. A rice producing prefecture, rich in good quality water, Fukushima boasts of a thriving sake, thus the rice wine brewing industry. Seasonal fruits such as peaches and apples and other kinds of fruits are harvested throughout the year. This is the birth region of the legendary Dr. Hideo Noguchi. Born Seikaku Noguchi in 1876 in Inawashiro in Fukushima Prefecture. Dr. Noguchi changed his first name to Hideo after reading a novel of a talented and intelligent doctor who bore the name Seikaku but later became lazy and ruined his life. When he was one and a half years old, he fell into a half and suffered a major burn injury on his left hand. However, at the age of 15, he underwent surgery that enabled him to grasp objects again. Thanks to the generous contributions of his elementary school teacher and friends. He was moved by the marvels of medicine, hence decided to become a medical doctor to help those in need and apprenticed himself to the very doctor who had performed his surgery. He left his native home with a resolve not to return till he achieves his objective. At age 20, he passed his exam to practice in medicine. He became a prominent Japanese bacteriologist and credited with the discovery of the agent that causes syphilis in 1911. He was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize and his impact was felt in the Americas, Denmark and Africa. It's been 90 years recounting Dr. Noguchi's history and for us in Ghana, we have a strong bond with this gem who had had to come to Africa to research on yellow fever and its cure. Unfortunately, he had to die by that same sickness he was trying to find the solution to. Today we are at the Noguchi Memorial Museum and here relics of him are displayed to tell his story. And at this particular hall where I am situated, they work around themes. Particularly around this time, they are looking at the theme of his left bent hand, which he had to undergo a surgery to correct it. This was incidentally caused by his mother. Established in 1939, the Noguchi Memorial Hall and Museum depicts his life and relics left behind by his family. One Dr. Kibashi is said to have put together all the items that will remind people of the life of Dr. Noguchi. This dream, for instance, is where his mother, Shika, was said to be cleaning utensils when Noguchi got burned. It shares values that Dr. Noguchi had for life, including the trait of perseverance and a legacy that will positively inspire future generations.
tourists from all over the world are schooled on his life and achievements upon a visit to the original birthplace of Dr. Hideo Noguchi and also allowed to enter the house to experience a typical Japanese house in the Fukushima prefecture in the Meiji period. This museum, established in 1939, 11 years after Noguchi's death, was to introduce to people his life and achievements. Our mission is to leave the legacy of Dr. Noguchi through the showcasing of these important materials. Dr. Noguchi was instrumental in cementing a strong bond between Ghana and Japan and there is the need to strengthen this relationship. Inawashiro in Fukushima Prefecture, hometown of the late Dr. Hideo Noguchi, has shown the desire to play host to Ghana's contingents for the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan. A visit to the area ahead of the Games showed how excited the people are, and this is reflected in the speedy manner in which things are being put in place to usher in the Ghanaian team come 2020. This particular gymnasium of the Lifelong Learning Division will host a number of sporting events at this particular place including judo, basketball, badminton and two of my favorite games, table tennis and volleyball. A 1,737 square meter floor area, the multi-purpose gymnasium has heated floors, auxiliary facilities, this seating of 976 with 12 reserved for the physically challenged. In an interview with the section chief of the Lifelong Learning Division, an office charged with seeing to the well-being of Ghanaian athletes, Mr. Yoshiro Kaneta indicated that the center is willing to support athletes from Ghana by providing the best training environment and the most suitable accommodation to enable them give up their best in the 2020 Olympics. Inawashiro is a beautiful town, home to majestic nature, Japanese tradition and culture. I hope the athletes take advantage of the occasion to explore the town. We will wholeheartedly welcome the Ghanaian team. The mayor of the town, Mr. Hishiro Zengo, noted this will further strengthen the bond between Ghana and Inawashiro. We are told of how well the people of Ghana treated Dr. Noguchi during his stay in Ghana. We are ready to host, support and cheer the Ghana athletes wholeheartedly as a token of our gratitude. Aside sports, Mr. Hishiro Zengo indicated tourists will be treated to the scenic view of Mount Bandai and Lake Inawashiro, the fourth largest lake in Japan. Pole vault, javelin, discus, high jump, triple jump, soccer are but a few of the games that will be played at this venue. So on this beautifully maintained pitch here in Inawashiro near the Lake Inawashiro in Fukushima Prefecture, as well, all the track and field events will be happening. I tried to be the Usain Bolt uh, of the time, but unfortunately, I, I couldn't run. I think I have put on much weight. We are looking forward to how th this town is going to host the Ghanaian team. And I'm really looking forward to Tokyo 2020. Indeed, Ghana and Japan's relations started some 90 years back when Dr. Noguchi stepped foot here and the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research set up in 1979 in Ghana is one facility that brings his works to life. 
The Semi-Autonomous Institute is the leading biomedical research facility in Ghana. The institute is committed to research on national health priorities and training of biomedical scientists. Its vision is to be a world-class institute capable of conducting high-quality cutting-edge research and training in biomedical sciences. At a symposium to celebrate Dr. Noguchi and the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, the then Japanese ambassador, Kairo Yoshimura, said Japan is happy to be associated with the institute and proud of its achievements. The Japan Agency's Programs Officer of the Department of International Affairs noted that with international collaboration, a number of pandemics and infections around the world can be contained. The Deputy Minister of Health, Kinsler Bwajijedu, said the Institute has supported Ghana in eradicating and preventing guinea worm, HIV AIDS, prevention and control, and resource for health development. I urge the researchers, policy makers, business partners here to make a maximum use of this meeting to further strengthen the relation between the two countries. And I use this opportunity to call for a more deepened collaboration between academia, that is the researchers, and policy makers to facilitate efficient and effective policy formulation and implementation, especially in the health sector. The Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research stands tall now as expectation is high for the country to lead in regional disease surveillance and build capacity for laboratory and research in West Africa. Ghana has over the years enjoyed cordial relations with Japan since the establishment of diplomatic ties between the two countries six decades ago, Japan has played and continues to play a highly supportive role in the socio-economic development of Ghana. This includes a loan agreement for the construction of a new bridge across the Volta River, a national trunk road and eight for the Tamamota Way roundabout, special scholarships and training for orphans and the youth under the Abe initiative amongst others. In the area of health, for example, under the ambit of the implementation of the Tokyo International Conference on Africa, African Development, plans of action, Ghana was taken as a model country for the implementation of a program that will result in the universal health coverage of citizens. Consequently, a HEMO vigilance program was launched starting with Konfanoche and Kolebu teaching hospitals. The Noguchi Medical Research Institute of Legon has been expanded to become a center for excellence for the control of infectious diseases in West Africa such as Ebola and other hemorrhage fevers. Furthermore, Japan is also assisting Ghana through the contribution of 64 chip compounds for primary and preventive health care, that is bringing health care to the very doorsteps of the rural population. Japanese businesses are being urged to take advantage of the many investment opportunities available in Ghana. The Akufuado government is looking forward to the Japanese market importing all their chocolate needs from Ghana. That will be a paradigm shift in our relationship. The year has been a special one for the two countries as it marks 60 years of diplomatic ties, 90 years of Dr. Noguchi's arrival in Ghana and 40 years of the arrival of Japan Overseas Cooperation Volunteers. Before coming to Ghana uh, in September, uh, three years ago, uh, the Ebola outbreak was getting serious in uh, some neighboring countries. My friends in Japan said farewell to me uh, with a big worry on my health. Now, now my friends in Ghana are saying uh, farewell to me with concern on my 
safety in Japan. I'm sure that while we are uh, in Ghana, ballistic missiles never fly over her territory. However, it's a reality in Japan. The Japan Overseas Cooperation Volunteers is a system of dispatching Japanese volunteers overseas operated by JICA. The dispatch of JICA volunteer to the developing country is one of our tasks. But parallelly, we have a role to introduce the situation of the world to the Japanese nation. Well, this center is located in the Fukushima prefecture. Fukushima is a very famous about the tragedy of the atomic power generation accident. But now you know, you have already realized the people in Fukushima prefecture is quite vibrant and they are eager to recover the situation. And after the six years of the tragedy, now the situation is steadily coming away. So that when they met the accident, the people in Fukushima prefecture were really encouraged by the lot of message from the developing, developing country, including the Ghana, gave us the lot of encouragement. Yes. With those communication and the trust, we could feel we are not alone. So, the JICA volunteer is a, a kind of the ambassador from Japan to your country to disseminate the trusty and the encouragement also. We know the importance of that. So that we are always thinking the win and win. Not only for the contribution to the people in the developing country, but also the people in Japan are receiving a lot of information and encouragement from your countries. We could see a lot of smiles of the Ghana. To see, and after seeing those smiles, we could be encouraged and we decide to increase our contribution more. <laughs> program is similar to the U.S. Peace Corps and includes volunteers in a wide range of fields such as agriculture, forestry, fisheries, education, health, and more than 120 technical fields. More than 30,000 volunteers have over the years been dispatched to more than 80 countries in Asia, Middle East, Africa, Central and South America the Caribbean and Oceania. The recruitment is held on April to May and October to November every year. Japanese citizens aged 20 to 39 are eligible for the application. It is commonly known by the acronym JOCV. Since 1977, when the government of Ghana and Japan signed agreements to establish the JOCV in Ghana, more than 900 Japanese volunteers have been dispatched to Ghana, volunteering to work in areas such as health, education, agriculture, and good governance. 
They are mostly dispatched to work all over Ghana, especially in the hinterlands where access to safe health and qualitative education is a great challenge. I worked for the irrigation farm. At the Nabrongo, the name called the Tono Irrigation Farm. So I grew up the rice. And also a shaman. Uh, we have I mean, the Japanese government assist for the research center, for irrigation research center. Especially I was working for the rice country. Her uh, Ghana is very safe country and uh, the Ghanaian people is very kind for foreign country foreign people so I'm very looking forward to going to Ghana. I've been to Ghana Tamare Northern region as an ICT teacher. I belong to Ghana GPS service center and uh, I was a uh, ICT teacher and uh, taught ICT for junior high school students. What was the thing that made you withstand that at all costs I'll still be here and I'll still teach ICT? Uh, because there's a group of students uh, who want to understand ICT and uh, but there's not enough uh, PCs and some other things that's why they made me they give me power to teach ICT. I'm looking for eating uh, Ghanaian food and I'm looking for making Ghanaian clothes. Uh, <laughs> clothes is very cute. So as a midwife, what will be your role? In Bongo. Ah, my job? Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm going to work uh, uh, as a midwife for uh, children, a child, baby, and mother's health. Uh, my name is Ta Tafumi Takashima. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, Unsawa in Eastern region. Uh, yes, uh, I am a physiotherapist. Yes, uh, uh, I will uh, take care of patients and uh, to verify the suitability of uh, equipment and uh, give uh, uh, advice uh, exercise. Yes. Okay, uh, my name is Hirokazu Takamas. Uh, please call me Mas. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, in Biriwa uh, to teach uh, car maintenance, uh, like uh, uh, hybrid operation systems, or and uh, um, how uh, how to work uh, engine or uh, what's connected with uh, a steering a steering with this is a two-way is a collaboration so the japanese government and jica so has contributed immensely to towards to ghana's so development so drive and the jocv represents the solid foundation of the relationship between the two countries this has been made possible by the relations of the two countries from the 70s, which has been deepened over the years due to the arrival of Dr. Hideo Noguchi, a Japanese bacteriologist who started the journey of research into the cure of yellow fever in Africa. Education to Dr. Noguchi an iconic figure in Inawashiro was important, hence every child in the community strives to achieve excellence and follow his footsteps. Japan has one of the world's best educated populations with 100% enrollment in compulsory grades and zero illiteracy. While not compulsory, high school enrollment is over 96% nationwide 
and nearly 100% in the cities. The need for every child to be educated is of prime concern to the people of the Kushima Prefecture, as it is to the entire country. This is the Inawashiro Senior High School, the only high school in the town. Some Ghanaian students from selected schools in the eastern region of Ghana, as part of an exchange program, visited the school to interact with the students as well as learn from each other. The teaching culture in Japan differs greatly from that of schools in the West. Teachers are particularly concerned about developing the holistic child and regard it as their task to focus on matters such as personal hygiene, nutrition, sleep that are not ordinarily thought of as part of the teacher's duties in the West. Students are also taught proper manners, how to speak politely and how to address adults as well as how to relate to their peers in the appropriate manner. They also learn public speaking skills through the routine class meetings as well as many school events during the school year. This helps to explain the Japanese characteristic of group behavior. <laughs> Dr. Noguchi faced so many challenges, but he made a remarkable contribution to the international society. Our aim is to nurture our students to make a mark in the world. Born in Agotime, Petoy, in the Volta region of Ghana, Sarah Mufortunate Adupo, a social studies teacher at a school in Adenkrebi, moved to Japan after applying for a scholarship online and passed an interview. He shares his experience as an English teacher in Fukushima. This is a very small town and um, the people don't speak any English, so when I came, it was really difficult to communicate but my job was to teach English, so when I go to school, I just teach English. But I, I had some little time to study Japanese by myself, so I try to study. If I don't study Japanese, I can't communicate with the people. I can't mingle with them. Even buying food, if you can't speak Japanese, is difficult. So it's been really challenging, but uh, I, I was brought up in, in a hard way, so you know, I took the challenge up and I overcame it. There is both positive and negative aspect of being a black in this community. I would say, you know, in Fukushima Prefecture, like we say Volta region or Ashanti region, there are not too many blacks here because of the, the nuclear disaster that occurred six years ago. So I was the only person, but they showed me so much love. Yeah, and then I'm also friendly, you know. I, I you know, I play soccer, so I join a soccer team. I play their drum, they call it taiko, and then I also practice kendo. So those are the things that got me close to them. Seima now works at the Inawashiro Hotel in Fukushima Prefecture, where the Ghanaian contingent for the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games will be housed. That's another difficult transition from the classroom to the hospitality industry. Because, uh, 
because it's a different job. Yeah. When I was in the classroom, it's my job, so I relaxed, you know, I did everything well. But this is a new experience. And you know, in the world, when you talk of customer service, Japan is number one. When you talk of customer service, they are so good. I think it is part of their culture. So being a black person or being an outsider working in the hospitality industry, it's challenging. But of course, I love challenges and I'm trying to overcome it. And they are surprised the way, you know, I'm getting used to their, you know, the way they service people, the way they talk to people. Oh, okay. We caught up with some Ghanaians who have, in one way or another, benefited from the educational system of Japan. At a time that I had no hope of pursuing further studies, I got this Mombushu scholarship to go and do my master's. Well, after the master's, I was given an extension to pursue a PhD. It is a scholarship that is worth experiencing. A scholarship that takes extremely good care of you as a student. This one basic thing about the scholarship is that it affords you the opportunity to concentrate perfectly on your core mandate of research and delivery. So it's not a kind of scholarship that makes room for you to go around looking for extra money so you lose concentration. So it's spot on, it's rewarding. It's a kind of scholarship that would enable you also assist siblings and relatives back at home. But that aside, let, let's talk about the how different is the kind of education from that of Ghana and what lessons are there um, for Ghana to take from? Yeah, they, they have, honestly speaking, a very good, good blend of theory and, and, and hands-on core protocols. And so they place more emphasis on what you can do. You're giving the foundation, the theoretical foundation, and a huge opportunity to do what we call hands-on, experiential learning. Here, when I was here, it was full of theories. The problem being that we didn't have that level of exposure. Yes. So we had to learn what was in the books. But when we got to Japan, we were faced with a reality. For example, we learned about GC, MS, gas chromatography, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry. Those were theories and pictures that at least we. But there in Japan, I was faced with a reality. I remember the second day I was taken to a lab and I was told, this is the GC. Gas chromatography that we've been learning about. Open, find the columns, the separation columns and everything. And the word to me was that this is what you're going to use. use. And they didn't care whether you would break it down or not. For them, the experience gained from learning was more valuable. And so that helped us understand a lot of technology. Kwejo Obeng Amuzwa is a beneficiary of the Ministry of Education Culture, Sports, Science and Technology of Japan Scholarship, studying agriculture at the Utonomia University. He is pursuing a PhD course. According to him, the focus is mostly on nutritional biochemistry and the experimental model animals are rats, mouse, pigs and chicken. For the research, the focus is on the importance of nutrients on skeletal muscles, liver, brain, kidney, adipose tissues, and the blood. One professor, Professor Ebenezer Usu, who is now the current Vice Chancellor of Legon, you know, he went to school in Chiba. So through him, that time he was the Dean of the Agriculture. So through him, I spoke to him that I've gotten the scholarship and uh, I need a school. That time it was, uh, I think it was about two weeks for the closing of the scholarship if I don't get it. So he helped me. He, he gave me a contact. Actually, he didn't. He just gave me a contact and he told me to write to that person. 
and I wrote to the person. The person was the dean of this uh, faculty, that's agriculture faculty, Professor Sugita. And Professor Sugita introduced me to my professor, Professor Fumi Akisensei. When I applied to him, he gave me the assurance that yes, it is, everything is okay, so I should send him my papers. When I sent him my papers, I wanted to know the exact thing that I'm coming to do in Japan. So he told me that this is what they do. Like, they, they are into nutritional biochemistry. So like what we eat and the effects that it has on our body, that is on, and the body is, they go detailed like in, on the genes. So it's basically like what I wanted to do. Because in Japan they don't plant GMOs or they don't allow GMOs. So he told me that I cannot do my research here, but I can still learn something that I, I can apply for in the future for my research. And with the course that I'm studying, my research area is on amino acids. Uh, this lab is particularly for amino acids and mm, polyphenols. If we talk of polyphenols, they are plant-based compounds which are used for medicinal purposes. Okay, so uh, for the amino acids that we do, we look at we look at the importance of amino acids on protein synthesis. Because for human beings to grow, for human beings to to be fit, it's all based on our muscles and what we eat. So what we eat is what builds us up. So if we are taking the right amount of food, or the right, the, the balanced food, then we are going to grow well. But if we are taking food which is not balanced, then you should know that uh, your growth will not be that like the one we desire. compared to someone who's taking a balanced diet. That is one thing. And so this research that I'm doing, I'm looking at a particular amino acid that we call arginine. Mm. And this arginine has been implicated in protein synthesis. That is, it has been seen to help in the process of protein synthesis. Mm. I came, uh, it took me six months to know all the laboratory protocols and everything that goes on here. And we were taken through a Japanese course, you know, the Japanese, and the Japanese course is very difficult. Uh, because, you know, we use alphabet. We have only 25 alphabet. But the Japanese have three different writings. And they have the katakana, the hiragana, and the kanji. The katakana is about 50 characters. The hiragana is about 50 characters. And the kanji is about 5,000 to 10,000 characters. So, uh, it's difficult, you know, for me to learn such. But I did my best. I learned the ones that I can use to communicate, just the few ones I can use to communicate because I realized that my subject area was because my professor speaks English. So he studied in the US, so he speaks English. So I realized that it wasn't too much uh, important for me to learn the language because it was also taking my time. So he, through him, I think I'm also able to learn some one or two Japanese okay. yeah, because he always tries to explain a lot of things of Japan to me. Like whenever we travel, he tell me he tells me this is this, this is that. But uh, this is what I have seen. The Japanese like people to know their culture. Yes, if you are with them they they like you to know more about them. So like wherever we go, he tells me maybe the history behind the names. And you know their names also have meanings. The Japanese names have meanings. So he tell me the meaning of the names and I've learned a lot about it and okay. I think Japan is a good country in terms of security it's a, it's a, it's a good country and because uh, no one will break into your apartment when you put your wallet or your phone anywhere believe me you go and come and you'll be there no one will touch it like they are they are loyal and they are good like that is how it's something that they, they put it into them from the childhood so before they go it's already in them they don't because it's, it's, they feel like this is their country and they are very proud of their country. So for you to come in, to come and destroy their country, they will not give you that chance. Okay. In the near future, this is what I would like to do because I'm studying more on amino acids.
I would like to help in the development of baby food for the children in Ghana because I have seen that in Japan when you come you don't find certain baby foods like several like it's not here they have their own baby food product so the foreign products we don't find them in Japan so I think Ghana should do that like we have cocoa all right but we can develop cocoa to become a good baby product for them actually the Japanese government have started helping Ghana with that project we have that we call the cocoa plus so we call the cocoa those contain some amino acids but it is, it is small the amount of amino so the Japanese government give the Ghana government some amount of amino acid to be putting into the food and I think they are it's in the development stage that they are doing but I think we can do more because Ghana has a lot of uh, a lot of food stuff that we should be able to process them at least for the children like uh, you know we have this this cocoa yam I don't know if you know we have a cocoa yam we have another type the water yam I don't know they, we used to call it five minutes mm -hmm. you know in Ghana we don't these days we don't see them but believe me this people every house has that particular plant like they plant it and they eat it and I was asking my professor he told me it contains a lot of amino acids it means that we have neglected most of our things and we are now going strictly to rice so I think we have to go back and look at what we had before to see if we can develop it for the betterment of the country because at the end of the day, each country is developing on a certain line and Ghana has to get a particular line that is to a special Africa because we are throwing most of our things away. And you know, uh, if you take the country like Ghana, you know, we are located in the tropics, so we have a lot of plants a lot of good plants, medicinal plants that we, we you see we should be able to use some of these things. These people they don't have it. So they rely strictly on the chemical and they will tell you that the plant base is the most important because whatever they do they get it from the plant and they try to replicate it synthetically. So if we have the plant base we can also do something like that. And also I would like to help in the development of tea. You know, let's suppose they have a lot of brands, tea, tea brands. Because instead of them using their, their plants for maybe production of only alcohol, no, they don't. Because they feel like everyone should have uh, the benefit that their plant has. So they produce tea. If you, if you cannot drink the alcohol, you should be able to take in the tea. So like Alombo like this can have a way to produce a tea from the, from the plant that they are using for the, for the medicinal bitters or something. You can have a tea from it. So that if I cannot drink Alamba, I should be able to take that tea, which will give me the same benefit. Professor Sion Wunajimai is the only black professor at the Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology. Currently, I'm doing research on organic mulches. And these are mulches that we can use in boosting agricultural production. And then also, especially for dry areas, if we have a little amount of water we can still save uh, the cost of irrigation and then these are materials that will also allow farmers to use minimum amount of fertilizers so they can save cost on fertilizers. We have taken samples of food uh, from mostly mining areas and some of you will be very surprised to learn that we have a lot of pollution especially with heavy metals mercury, cadmium, arsenic and so many other metals and so even fish river fish, a dream and stuff. We have done all these tests. And so I think this is the right time that the government needs to be serious about uh, pol uh, the pollution from uh, mercury and other stuff. Because here in Japan, so many years ago, they also experienced this. They had a lot of pollution related problems, especially diseases like Minamata disease, Itai Itai disease. And this all comes from heavy metal pollution. So from the data we have, we will not be very surprised that in the next few years we're going to see some of these diseases surfacing in Ghana and I think doctors have to be very careful because some doctors may not be able to tell the kind of diseases that will be coming up. We are expanding and diversifying our relations and we want to continue deepening it. We are hoping that uh, in the near future the Japanese Prime Minister will also visit Ghana so that we get a more recent Prime Minister also uh, uh, enhancing the relations between our two countries and uh, it is our expectation that our president Nana Akufuado 
will also come to Japan, especially since TICAD 7 is in the air. Uh, uh, we are very confident that he will be among the delegations that will be here. Indeed, Ghana and Inawashiro in the Fukushima prefecture, the third largest prefecture in Japan, has a long-standing history. The common thread that runs through citizens of both countries is their peaceful nature, calm demeanor, the spirit of kindness and unmatched hospitality.